Steve Krashen, and I'm going to tell you a story. In fact, I'm going to give you some hard theory about language acquisition through the story. It, I can tell you the story. You know everything about the work we've done over the last 50 years. Um, I live about, oh, 10 miles from a supermarket. And uh, one time when I went there, there was somebody there who I had never seen before, a new clerk. I saw his name. His name was um, Fidel. And I heard him speak Spanish. So, of course, he was my checkout clerk. I spoke Spanish to him. Spanish is certainly not my best language. It's like three or four, but it went okay. Uh, he answered me in English first. And I found out later that they're instructed to do that. No matter what, you've got to answer in English. So I continued in Spanish. I said to Fidel, tu puedes ayudarme, you can help me. Uh, Mi me meta is to hablar español como ustedes. I want to speak Spanish the way you do. Okay, you in the plural. I said, please, let's speak Spanish. Hablamos español. He loved it. We've been speaking Spanish every Friday, I'd say for the last year and a half when I've been going there. Uh, I'm better in Spanish now. And I've only been really from talking to Fidel. Uh, actually not. It's not from talking to Fidel. I only talked to him for about a minute. That's not enough. And I only listened to him talk for about 30 seconds. He's got other customers, but I am getting better. I know I'm getting better because it's more, if you know Spanish, it's more charlar, talking in general, not just hablar, it's just regular talking. We gossip a lot. You know, who was it who said, if you don't have something good to say about somebody, come sit next to me. <laughs> that, that was Theodore Roosevelt's daughter, <laughs> the famous quote. Uh, we talk about all kinds of things. It's really fun. I now, thanks to him, have a reputation at the supermarket. People think I speak 10 languages. They come up, talk to me in other languages. It's really fun. But I, And I'm getting better, but it's not from talking to Fidel. This is not enough time to do it. When I go home, I've been following the advice of a colleague of mine. His name is Benico Mason. I've been doing a lot of reading of very, very easy Spanish. By the way, another reason I know I'm getting better, I ran into a friend of mine who's fluent in Spanish from a Mexican American. And I spoke to her in Spanish. She said, Steve, your Spanish is so much better. What are you doing? Well, I've been going home and reading lots and lots of easy, easy books, books designed for language students. And they're called graded readers. They're getting better in the last few years. They're gradually becoming literature. And I'll give you an example of how good they are. One by my favorite author, Adriana Ramirez. She tells the story of a young man who is in Bogota visiting, and he's looking for a hotel where he's supposed to meet a friend, and he gets lost. And his Spanish isn't very good. He finds another young man, tells him the problem. They've managed to communicate. He says, I know where you're going. I'll take you with me. I'll take, I'll take you there. They run into two beautiful young ladies. The beautiful young ladies go up to his new guide, give him hugs, hold his hand, and give him kisses on the cheek. Oh my God, what's going on here? Then the new guide introduces the young lady to the narrator of the story. They hold his hand and give him hugs. Finally, they reach the hotel and uh, the new guide says, the guide says, I suppose you're wondering what's going on here. He says, those girls are my cousins. And this is the way we are in Bogota in Colombia. We're very demonstrative. It's no surprise that they would give you a hug too. So what Ramirez manages to do is teach a little culture and tell an interesting story. So the, it's anecdote after anecdote. Another one she wrote is about a deaf student, near deaf, hard of hearing, who has trouble in school and how he gets by, how he manages to find a seat where he can read the teacher's lips. Turns out it's her husband, I found out. So this is the kind of good literature that's going on. This is the whole thing. Let me tell you what I didn't do. I didn't go home and study Spanish. I didn't try to talk to people and get my errors corrected. I didn't make flashcards and vocabulary. I did it through reading interesting books that were comprehensible and not just interesting, but compelling very interesting, where you really want to know what's going to happen next. And some of these are so good, you forget that you're reading in another language. That's my whole theory. That's it. 
We acquire language when we understand it, when we understand what people tell us, or we understand what we read, and the content is absolutely interesting. The result of that is being able to speak and being able to write. Speaking and writing are a result of language acquisition, not a cause. That is the entire theory. And over the last 50 years, we've been gathering more and more evidence. I'm going to give you one of the hundreds of studies that I've either read or been involved with. By the way, if you want to read them, you can find them all at sdcrashen.com. Free download of my books and papers. I do this not because I'm generous, but because they're all too expensive. Nobody can afford it. So otherwise you don't get it out there. So feel free to download them. You may share them with anyone except Donald Trump. How's that? Okay. Um, so we do this through comprehension. It's called comprehension. The ability to produce is the result. One study of the many. Done by a former student of mine, Fei Shen, one of the California State Universities. She worked with a young lady, a uh, secondary school freshman, who had been limited in English, but her English was now pretty good. First language, uh, uh, that means uh, Mandarin. Okay. Uh, the school she went to, the first week they give kids, everyone who comes, a test on reading in English. And they expect that through, this, through the year, you'll get better and better. Well, this girl named Sophie, we called the paper Sophie's Choice, uh, got worse over the year. Her English got worse. Then she'd go home over the summer, come back in the fall, and her English was better than it was all last year. She got worse during the year and better, better, better over the summer. What was she doing over the summer? She went to the local public library to get out of the heat, nice and air conditioned, found the section on young people's literature and read for pleasure. She read Sweet Valley High, okay? She read uh, detective stories for kids, okay? Nancy Drew, et cetera. These are pretty good books, by the way. I've looked at them. She read 50 books over the summer. When she came back, her English was improved, even though that wasn't her intention. That's the kind of study we're coming up with. Reading for pleasure, having friends, et cetera. A study I found this morning when I was reviewing for today, getting my notes together, I found a study that I cited years ago they found, they looked at college students who are international students at Indiana University, and they gave them what's called the uh, TOEFL test, the big test of English as a foreign language. And they gave them questionnaires. What do you do all day, et cetera. The amount of just plain socializing and speaking English was not a predictor. The amount of pleasure reading was. It's comprehensible, fascinating input, and reading is one of the best ways to get it. That's a quick look at the last 50 years of my life. There's more to go. Though.